right guys welcome back and this is your first time here I'm the Northwest Fisherman Chris and today we're gonna to be kind of talking about my favorite pre-spawn and spawn baits okay um, this is kind of a big huge broad topic and this isn't like everything I throw but let's I'm gonna to try to keep this more aimed towards that pre-spawn very very early spawn period of time so if you take a look at the desk, it kind of looks like a complete disaster. Um, I'm, I've got a fishing tournament coming up and just a bunch of other stuff's been going on. So please excuse this mini disaster going on here. And we'll get talking about these baits here. Um, first one I want to bring up is spinner baits. Okay, I, I am a huge lover of spinner baits. And this is just the normal ones that I use like all of the time. Um, I just keep these in the top of my box, no big deal. But we've got a couple standout heroes that I really want to touch on for this time of the year and these, well, these conditions. Because this is a fantastic time to throw a spinner bait. If you're, if you're in a situation and you feel like a bladed jig would be a great thing and you're just not quite getting the bites that you want on a bladed jig or the bass aren't quite moving as fast to keep up with your bladed jig, I highly suggest a spinner bait. Now, I've got a couple spinner baits here that I just, I think are a better color combination than most. Um, of course, if you're, if you're in a smallmouth fishery, you're gonna want that chartreuse and orange. Smallmouth hate chartreuse and orange, but largemouth will also nail chartreuse and orange. Um, I fish mainly everything primarily in a 3 8 ounce size, and if I'm fishing a little bit deeper water, I'll put a little bit more of an aggressive paddle tail on it so it goes deeper versus sometimes using a outright heavier spinner. And even then, even if I'm like this guy, this is a three quarter ounce. Um, spinner here and I just put a oversized grub tail on it and it it works fantastically just slow roll that and like 15 to 30 feet of water they nail it um, but these colors work for smallmouth and they work for a largemouth fantastic this is if I was in a smallmouth fishery this would be my go-to on those deep points where they're staging to move up into the beds okay now, when you get up more into the, the actual beds themselves, because I usually fish mostly 3 8 ounce size baits, depending on what your, um, your bait fish and your lake look like, um, I am a huge lover of using white spinners. Um, just white is my pretty much, it's pretty much my go-to color especially if I don't really know the fishery that well, I'll throw white till I kind of see something or make a different judgment call because it stands out so well. Um, a lot of other t places and stuff like that, if you know if it's more of a shad place, throw something that's more of like a shad color. Oh, that one got a little melty. I'm going to have to replace that trailer. Um, but yeah, just throw your shad colors. Now... Here in the Pacific Northwest, I know that if I'm fishing in less than two feet of water and I want to throw like two feet to, let's say, 15 feet of water, I know I can definitely get away with throwing a bluegill stuff color or a black color. Okay, so like these right here, these are amazing okay if i want it to go a little bit slower i'll throw that paddle tail on the back okay if i don't really need it to be that slow or i don't really need it to look that good to a bass i'll throw something like this with uh the ten thousand fish just little yodo worm okay or anything similar but always on spinners just put some sort of trailer on it because it makes up for the volume on the body and it gives something more for that bass to try to suck in when it comes up the bite because it's 
the trailers, I always fish a trailer, and I always highly recommend fishing a trailer because of the way that the bass mouth works. When it opens, it draws kind of a vacuum. So if you have more mass to your bait, it's easier for it to suck it in and less likely that's going to miss or you would need a trailer hook. Um, here's another one of these because I just, I use a ton of these. Um, this is actually the Guggen. I know most people don't like Guggen, but this color combination, I've had a tremendous amount of luck and the hardware for the Guggen spinners is really, really good. Um, I've also got their new bumper. Um, it's just a single Colorado versus Colorado and Willow. Um, but this color combination is just regular bluegills, nothing super fancy, just a simple skirt. If you get anything close to this color combination and then throw an associated uh, paddle tail swim bait on it or a straight tail like this, it works fantastic. Um, but you just have to keep in mind what your water clarity is like. So if you're, if, it, if it's like a dark murky day, I'll throw that Colorado blade so it has more thump. But if it's a nicer, brighter day, I'll throw that willow blade because it catches way more light than that Colorado blade does. And that's just kind of what you got to keep in mind is your blade type. Um, there are other styles. Like if we go back to my chartreuse ones here. So these are from Trickster. And it's kind of, so it's an elongated Colorado blade essentially. These have a lot of thump versus something that's just a painted willow like this. Okay. Um, these, are, these are all around great baits, these Trickster ones. And this one I've had so long, and I've caught a ton of bass on this, but I have no idea what brand it is. I probably had this for like 10 years. Like the blades are all corroded and not that great looking anymore. Um, but yeah, beautiful time of the year. And it doesn't matter what you throw on there for a trailer. But try a trailer, whether it's a grub trailer, it's a paddle tail trailer, if it's just like a stick bait trailer, or even like what's left of a Ned Rig, just throw it on there. Even if it's got no action, no appearance, don't worry so much about the color combinations, because right now the fish are hyper aggressive and they're oriented on bait fish. So if it moves, they're going to go after it. <clears throat> so yeah, get your spinners out. And if you've got lightweight buzz baits, mine are all put away right now. I forgot to grab them before the video. But if you have like quarter ounce buzz baits, especially in like white or blue, right now is a fantastic time to throw that. And even with that, you don't have to have a paddle tail. You just put like a grub tail or like a straight worm on there, like a trick worm or something. Or not, not a whole trick worm, but like half of a trick worm. Um, that's a fantastic way to work on them work the fish over. Um, speaking of topwaters, like a buzz bait, two other baits that I absolutely throw this time of the year, and I've had quite a bit of luck since I've been out fishing this season and practicing with the fish moving up, is the Hellraiser. Um, I really, really like the bone, and I like the um, snow color. This one is the bone. Um, these are, if you haven't seen the Hellraiser, it's essentially, it's like a topwater chatterbait, but it's also really cool because this sinks like, like a buzzbait. So when you first cast a buzzbait out, you know, you got to bring it up. So it does, you know, thing on top of the water. Um, this is kind of the same idea, except for this blade chatters under the water. So I throw this on an eight to one reel. So that way I can pause let it sink a little bit and then pull it back up. Or if I'm going over a spot that I know is heavy cover, I can pull it over that cover a lot higher and faster than normal because with the hooks on these, they just, I'll be honest, this will hook on absolutely everything around it. Your clothes, other rods, 
its own line. Like, if this bait didn't produce so well, I would not use this. But it, between the chatter, the little chattering blade back there, the fact that it's a top water, and the little nose of it, because when it's in the water, it fishes like this. So just that little bit of that nose is what's sticking up above the water. And it just, it works so well. And it's got rattles. <clears throat> it's good size profile. And I've been smashing it on the white and the bone. They're, they've been my two most productive colors. Um, but yeah, the Z-Man Hellraiser, this thing is fantastic. They've got a bunch of different colors. I've got pretty much all of them, but the bone and the snow are my two favorite. And then the Six Cent Speed Wake, I've been fishing this one quite a bit. This is actually the only Six Cent bait that I've actually broken the hook off on. And I, that's because I sat on it. I'll just, I'll be completely honest. I sat on it and thankfully the hook didn't go into me. Um, this is another one of those great, you know the bass are up shallow, they're territorial, and they're angry. So you throw this across and you can just work it like normal. You can pause it. You can do quick flicks of the reel just to get it to kind of rip through a little spot a little bit or if you know there's like a hole coming up it floats so it sits up there or if you reel it down a little bit faster it'll dig down to like a foot down but all around this speed wake this is a great bait for this time of the year and this is also that um, six cents bone color I believe it's just bone it's nothing special I've got this bait in two or three colors, um, but once again, right now, the bone for this is my favorite. And it's got, it doesn't have a whole lot of a rattle, but it's got a soft muted rattle. But it's mostly the action of the bait and that wake that it produces. This is, this has been pretty fantastic. Um, of course, right now, with the fish, some of the fish moved up and some of the fish staging to move up and your grass cover and all that isn't quite all there yet it's starting to grow the lipless the lipless is great this is the sixth sense i believe this is a duke 65 i'm probably wrong but this just the more natural colors right now have been just working for me it might also have to do with the fact of my location but and the clarity of my water because my water is usually always either super murky or it's unbelievably clear like 20 feet of visibility plus okay but lipless fantastic this time of the year um but of course we cannot even start to go into talking about um springtime baits and spawn and pre-spawn baits without touching on the color red okay and this is this is my red box this is all the red baits that i usually use this type of this time of the year um not necessarily the ones that i carry with me all year long but i've got my red box with me and of course everything in the red box is red um, there's a few standout guys in here beyond like your like <clears throat> shallow to mid divers that's perfect for those fish that are setting up to move in. Okay, and they're they're all hooked together. Yeah, here, here we go. So this guy's this is the uh, wow. I want to say this is the. Curve 55? I don't think it is. I think I'm wrong. I mean, I think I'm lying about that. I don't think this is a Curve 55, but I could be wrong. Um, this dives 6 to 9 feet. So that is perfect for that those drop-offs right in front of the spawning grounds. Or anywhere that's near some structured cover on the way to the spawning flats. This is a great bait for it. And it's red. So anything that's a shallow to medium diver right now is really great plus if you're in a smallmouth fishery smallmouth are always keyed in on smaller profile baits so 
that's a thing to keep around. Now, once again, already proved this spring. Wow, those... That's... Okay, that's a situation. I'll deal with it later. Um, this is another one of those lures that's really just been putting out work for me. Um, not always necessarily the red. Um, let me... Let me grab the one that I've actually got tied on right now. This is... Oh, that's, that's, that's not it. Um, this is the Swank 77 by Six Cents. Okay. Um, what's really cool about this bait, it comes in two sizes. It comes in the 77 size, and then it comes in... Oh, almost. A 66 size okay and these things have stupid rattles in them like this is obnoxious like it's it's a little ridiculous but if your water's kind of murky and you're fishing in, in a spot that's already got a fair amount of like grass or debris or just the water clarity is not that great these are phenomenal okay um, I've been throwing the red one, and I've been throwing this other, I believe this is an exclusive color from Sixth Sense. I could be wrong. I'm trying to remember now. But these are fantastic. However, what's been staying a tried and true staple for me is that bluegill color. Um, I have... I have waxed quite a few bass with this, and this thing actually does a really good job at ripping through cover. And of course, it's got those black, those black nipple, or black nipple, huh, black nickel EWG style treble hooks on it. And once they latch onto it, they're on, they're coming in. Um, and I have been fishing this bait a lot. Oh, there's some blood on this, it looks like. Oh no, that's right, because I cracked this one. Okay, also, you can eventually break these. But this one's this one's holding in there. I think I knocked, bounced it off a dock too many times. But, Swank 77, it's, it's a fantastic bait. I completely stand behind it. And the Swank 77 is kind of one of those really cool square bills but not really a square bill um 77 dives to six feet the 66 i think dives to four feet um i will fish it right into the shallows right into the garbage that way it can do its thing across the bottom you know do the square bill things i'll fish it around wood i'll fish it around basically everything because this this silly curved bill really does a really good job at just getting it through cover plus if it does get hung up one thing that's super nice about it is that you can rip it free pretty pretty easily um only only a couple times have i hung the 77 up and i was kind of like oh i might not get it back this time but i usually do um other notable baits yeah here it is here it is, this pink guy right here. This is a Genko. I forget the exact model, but this pink to orange with that greenish blue back, this has actually turned out to be a really good bait. Um, this dives down to like nine feet. This is another one of those medium divers in an awesome color scheme. Highly recommend. Right now is a great time to throw your reds, your pinks, and your oranges. If you got them, just throw them. It's it's completely worth it. Um, and of course, you know you've got your your standard square bills. You got your other deeper divers, but and your other lipless cranks. But yeah, right now it's a great time for red. Okay, so we'll let, set that over there for right now. And this this video really could not be you. I started with spinner baits because I didn't want to start with chatter baits. Okay, we can't do this video without talking about the chatter baits. Okay, um, whether it's your stealth blade jackhammers, 
or your regular jackhammers, the big blades, the freedom ones, the regular <laughs> chatterbait, just, just all of these work fantastically. Now, if I was going to pick three colors of chatterbaits to throw right now, of course, white would be an option, okay? But I have a tremendous amount of luck in my fisheries, whether it's super clear water or it's basically dusk and the water's one foot of visibility. With black and blue, red, and green pumpkin. Like there's, here, let me get this jackhammer out. Oh, this isn't a jackhammer, this is regular chatterbait. They just, I hate, I really hate to say it because they're, they're so expensive. I mean, the jackhammers are 15 bucks, okay? That's kind of a lot for a lure. And then I really love putting the razor shads on them, okay? Color matching the razor shads. Um, but it just works so well. And even at that, like, I still keep the Thunder Crickets around, I believe. Is this a Thunder Cricket? Yeah. I keep the Thunder Crickets in here too. And I still throw the Razor Shad trailer on it. Just for simplicity. That way I don't have to take all my Elastec trailers off of here. I can leave them all rigged. With these Spro boxes. These are jig boxes. Um, one of these is about half the thickness of a regular 3600 box. And the elastic plastics don't react with this foam. Okay, these have been in here rigged for pretty much a year at this point. They sat out in the sun during the summer. They they didn't react with this foam. So I'm not worried about the foam reacting with the elastic. If I threw a regular bait in here, this whole thing would just turn into a giant goopy mess. But yeah, this is... <sighs> If you're, if you're going to buy a jackhammer and you're not sold on it, buy black and blue. Buy this right here. Okay? Regular old black and blue jackhammer, black blade, nothing fancy. Get the pack of the razor shads. This razor shad's been on here since I got this one because I usually know how many chatterbaits I've lost by the number of razor shred packages I have to replace because these these don't really go bad like this here let me get this guy out my green pumpkin jackhammer this this razor shad has been on here for a little bit over a year now at this point because I haven't lost this jackhammer it's it's kind of it's kind of showing its age a little bit, but it's still very pliable. It's been on there a year. Okay. Um, the Razor Shads, they're five bucks a pack. The Jackhammer is 15 bucks. So to go fish one of these, you don't have to have a Razor Shad trailer, but it's my favorite trailer for the Jackhammer and the Chatterbaits in general. Um, I do throw other things on them. Like I've got this... Um, this cross size here because the cross size has weed guards on it that kind of work sort of a little bit they deflect off of wood a little bit better like this one I've got an elastic grub tail on it in red but if you're going to buy one just to try one out get the black and blue okay there's no need for anybody else to be like oh I need all of these baits to go fish you don't you don't I might have a tackle problem okay but just get the get the black and blue jackhammer or even get a regular chatterbait and then once you fish it and you have some luck with it go pick up a thunder cricket too not necessarily maybe the same color just pick up a good color that's good for your fishery and use both because some days when you feel like it should be a vibrating jig bite or a spinner 
spinner uh, bait bite because these when I'm feeling the bite for either one of these these are pretty well interchangeable okay I will say the chatter baits do I feel like they catch a little bit more fish um, and they catch really good quality fish but the spinner baits it's only quality fish maybe not as many okay because it is such a larger profile bait um, and if you're if you're thinking about like oh maybe the jackhammer is too big for my area it's okay it's okay go get yourself a little baby mini max these are awesome too this is an awesome little bait and once again I threw a little grub tail on it this smashes okay especially smallmouth um but yeah guys i can't talk about spring baits without bringing up chatter baits or bladed jigs if you will <clears throat> go ahead close this up and move on to soft plastics okay so we all know like you got your senko you got your shaky heads you got whatever okay and we all have our go-to colors um green pumpkin um watermelon flake um you've got your oh what is it the purpley one why am i spacing on that right now um june bug june bug is a solid option okay but especially in my area up here i i'm a little bit mad i saved this to the end of the video because most people probably won't watch this to the end my favorite spawn and pre-spawn soft bait or soft plastic color is the reason why i kept it off camera too is that bubble gum pink okay so i got it in trick worm super salted plus and i got it in that five inch senko now you can rig these absolutely however you want okay you want to neko rig this you want to wacky rig this you want to texas rig this however you want whatever reason the silly bubblegum color kills in the pre-spawn and the early spawn they just hone in on it it's like it's weird it's like more so than the other colors like it's very very noticeable and the bright pink trick worms on a shaky head like we all know what a trick worm looks like on a shaky head but this pink it's kind of ridiculous okay now the rest of the year I don't really use these much like I, I will throw it um, just to just to be different like if they've probably been seeing um, like your traditional colors all the time or even like your red mixes because I have trick worms and like four different red colors pink J do the pink okay um, there's just there's something about that bubblegum pink in the early in the year or even in pressured waters because it's so different than everything else they're seeing but yeah that's that's pretty much it for my pre-spawn early spawn oh I forgot to talk about one thing actually I forgot to talk about two things okay this is a great time to throw your big swim baits like your like the, the six inch trace or like your nine inch glide baits but also don't forget for those fish that are holding off and suspending out it's a prime time to throw your jerk baits um, this is a vision 110 this is their I want to say this is their GP perch and this thing's really really legit and this is on my dedicated jerk bait combo um, but yeah guys jerk baits are still a thing right now and they're a thing all year long like if you 
if you get some like super pressured fish held up under docks, even in the dead summer, I'll throw a jerk bait to lure them out. Cause they'll come out, they'll check it out. Cause they'll be like, what, what is, what is going on? What is that? That doesn't make any sense. And then they'll hit it cause it'll be a reaction cause you'll move it. Um, but yeah, jerk baits, super solid right now. Um, especially if you can back up your craft, your boat or your um, kayak or whatever you're fishing out of, right there on that line, the edge of that spawning ground and just cast it out as far as you can and then bring it back. Cause they're gonna be, some of them are gonna be sitting down there and suspended. Some of them are gonna be behind you. So, sometimes they'll come out of the spawning area past you to hit your bait. I've had that happen several times. Or you can throw it perpendicular to the ledge, if you have a ledge. Or if you get them on an isolated flat. It's it's still an awesome way to catch them. Um, if you don't want to throw other stuff. But yeah, that's it guys. Um, sorry, sorry it's been so, so long since I've posted a video. It's been like a week. And I feel bad about that, but you know, life things happened around here so yeah anyway um be safe out there guys it's warming up it's gonna start getting busy on the water um just just keep your head on a swivel be aware of your surroundings watch out for pleasure boaters stuff like that or if you're on the shore just watch out for like just more people out because it is warming up um just get out there try some of the, try some of your new stuff that you picked up over the winter you're gonna be surprised this is a great time of the year to go out there and try to break your pb um i didn't say anything about jigs because i'm right now i'm not jig oriented um right now i'm not i'll, I'll throw a ned but it's the same ned that i'm gonna throw majority of the rest of the year and as far as jigs go it's still basically the same jig that I'm going to throw the, re the all the rest of the year, okay? Um, just your standard, your footballs, your swim jigs, stuff like that. Um, if you're in pressured waters, just, yeah, just, you got it. You know the color schemes. You know the ideas here. If you're going to throw a swim jig, go with the traditional spinnerbait color, um, just to be low-key. It's a great time to throw that. Um, I need to stop talking. But I want you guys to remember, F-A-F-O, fish around and find out. Take care. See you later.